Amen. Hallelujah. Shalom. Nashe, Hove, Haya, Ve Hove, Ve Yavo, who was, who is, and who is to come, who Yavo, he will come. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to study the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord, Yehovah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for revealing your name. Hallelujah. I pray this will be a blessing to hear this study. So thanks for joining us. If you join us on YouTube, we're just doing this on Zoom. We call this a YouTube, which we've been asked to do. I know people want to do this study. It's the study into the name of the Lord, which is Yehovah. So we're going to begin the study today in uh, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, we were doing this a couple of weeks ago when it's all a portion, and that's when I said we'll come back into a second study on this. I want to show you some wonderful things today. I'll, we'll finish off, I think it's going to be a long one, but we'll finish off just showing examples of how the name of Yehovah, the name of the Lord, is written in Hebrew manuscripts. We'll go to the Aleppo Codex, we'll talk about that for a bit, and the Leningrad Codex. And then we'll finish off today with the ironic blessing, which is all about putting his name on his people. And um, Mike will do that. And then we'll finish off with a wonderful song, the ironic blessings on by Sarah Lieberman. So stay around, pause whenever, you know, but study this, the things that we will do today. It's wonderful. So we started this really the other week in Exodus chapter three and continually through this narrative, we up to Exodus 13, we'll start this week. And all the way through this narrative, we keep seeing the name of the Lord. But it goes right back to Gen Exodus chapter 3, and we'll start reading at verse 10. I might just screen share this.
because a lot of this will be screen sharing this presentation so we can see it for yourselves. So, um, Exodus chapter 3, verse 10. And God, this is after the burning bush, isn't it, Moshe? Moses is at the burning bush and he's saying now, God said to Moses, I am, sorry, verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you. That's important that I will be is important in a minute. But you can see it in the Hebrew that this is clearly I will be. So he said, I will be eh, yeah, with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall save God on this mountain. This is happening at Mount Sinai. This is where Israel will be in a few weeks from that, from that time, back at Mount Sinai. Verse 13, then Moshe said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moshe, I am who I am, but that's why I said it's important to see in verse, what we read before in verse 12. It's really in Hebrew, Echieh, Asher, Echieh, which means I will be who I will be. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, Echieh, I will be, has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moshe, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, Yehovah, but you know, in all of our Bibles, here it is in the, in the Blue Letter Bible, it's uh, it's Lord, isn't it? It's more, moreover, you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord, in big capitals, L O R D, and that's what we're going to look at today. And see, you can see it there, we'll bring you a lot more out of this, but there it is in the Hebrew, there, Yehovah. Now, how we pronounce that is what we'll deal with, but there it is, and just Point it out now, you can see this. Yehovah, but I can't say Yehovah when I look at that because this is the convention that there's a vowel point missing just where the cursor is there. There needs to be a lot of vowel points. All we can say with that is Yehvah, or as we've also mentioned, Yehwah. Some people say W for the Vav, this third letter. But there's a con there's a vowel point missing, and that's the convention of these Masoretes who wrote these manuscripts and they would, by convention, leave out the middle vowel point so that it was unpronounceable. And we'll look at that as well, why it is this unpronounceable name. Well, we'll see. But that's the convention that we've got in our English Bibles is that they always put Lord in. So now we're here, I'll just go into it. And this is interesting because here it is. This is the Blue Letter Bible, wonderful tool getting better, it's an ongoing work as I'm starting to realise. But there's what we've got in the text, and that's faithful to the actual text that we've got, Yehva, or Yehwa. But for some reason, the, Master, the, the Blue Letter Bible has put in here the full vowel points. Yeah, that is always, that's how you pronounce this. I used to have the habit of saying Yahova, but it's undisputedly Yeh. How would it's undisputed with that vowel point being there? But that could just be the Blue Letter Bible doing what they want to do. We'll see. I'm amazed. And I'll finish off today with showing you an example from the Leningrad and how the Blue Letter Bible has faithfully followed it through. So Yehovah is in the Blue Letter Bible. Let's go a bit deeper. You can do this yourself. You can pause this, but you can do this yourself. Just check on this. Go a bit deeper into this word. Yehovah, they put the full vowel points there, which incidentally, if you get the uh, get an image of the original King James Bible, that had the name Yehovah on the front with all the vowel points. This is why it's become Jehovah. But there's no J in Hebrew, Yehovah. is interesting stuff. You can see what the root of this word is, and it's Haya, which means, you can see it there, was, and that's what we just sang at the start with Paul Wilbur, Asher Haya, who was, Vehovei, who is, Vehavo, who will come, 
or they echie who will be but that song is who yavo he will come josh verano sing song who yavo he will return all about your shit. <laughs> and that's what this is all about and that's what the name you know there's, there's one there's a lot of value i believe in studying these things but what the simple most beautiful takeaway of all this is is that the name Yehovah means who was, who is, and who is to come, or who will be. And when we look at Genesis, Exodus chapter 20, Mount Sinai, when God is saying, I am, our Bibles say, the Lord, your God. But when you realise it's I am Yehovah, your God. And when you realise what he's saying, I was, I am, and I will be for all time, your God. That's oh, that's what his name does to me. And it's what I think he wants to do to everyone, because that's what his name means. Asher, Haya, Behove, Beyavo, Yehovah, who was, who is, who is to come. Revelation chapter one, Yeshua says it of himself. <laughs> I am who is, who was, and who is to come. Yeshua is Yehovah. Yeshua means Yehovah saves. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Look at this. This is the there it is. Now, this is beautiful to see what it is. This is tells us how many times Yehovah's in the Old Testament, the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures. 6,510, they count. Other people have got more, but you know, 6,500 is a lot. And that's how many times it's been taken out. And replaced, this is replacement theology, placed with L O R D. And that's only being inherited from the Jewish people themselves who've replaced the name of Yehovah with, well, Adonai. And we'll look at that again. I'll show you the text for that. But, you know, you might have heard Hashem, which is the name. Adonai is beautiful, it means Lord. And it's completely different letters than Yehovah. It's a completely different word than Yehovah, but for the reasons we will look at, the Jewish people have been forbidden from using the name, and so somehow we've adopted that and put Lord in, when it, we could have just put Yod, Y-H-V-H, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. 6,000, and you know, there's the feeling of what the name means, the existing one. If he was, who is, who will be. You know, you can go deeper, you can read this, you can read all of these notes, which I have, and they're good, good notes. Good notes to read from the Strongs, or this is from the Decenius, Hebrew child Lex, Chaldee Lexicon. And it's great, it shows you all the 6,500 times, but it goes right back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, the day that Yehovah, Elohim, made the head, earth and the heavens. It's wonderful stuff. So that is that. Uh, let's just continue in this narrative anyway, because that's what, uh, what Yehovah has told Moses. He says in verse 15, Moreover, God said to Moses, Moshe, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, Yehovah, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, he likes to be known in this way, <laughs> has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial or mention forever to all generations. Now, just go to the chapter four while we're in this narrative. This is the, what we've looked at the last two weeks, but this is how vital it is. Because in chapter four of Exodus, now just cut now big chunks, but this is the point now, is he says in chapter four, verse 22, God has raised Moses up, he's met with him at the bear and bush, he's revealed himself to him, he's given him signs to perform. And now he's telling him, when you go to Pharaoh, say this. Then you shall say, Exodus chapter four, verse 22, then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says it's Yehovah, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I say to you, let my son go, that he may save me. I mean, Israel's my son, my firstborn. He's not here to save you and build bricks for you. 
Because my soul, let him save me. And that is the gospel message that we are free to save the Lord. That's real biblical freedom. So let my son go that he may save me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed, I will kill your son, your firstborn. And that's where we finished off on the last Sabbath Torah portion was the Passover narrative of Exodus 12. The firstborns that were killed if they didn't have the blood of the lamb. Gospel. Verse chapter 5, now continuing in this open narrative. Chapter 5, this is the outcome of the first instance. In chapter 5, verse 2, Pharaoh said, because Moses said, thus says Yehovah. Pharaoh says, well, who is Yehovah? That I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I do not know Yehovah, nor will I let Israel go. And that's the way of rebellion, isn't it? Not knowing the Lord. Now, let's go to chapter 7. Chapter 7, and this is now, uh, obviously, the, he's refused to let the people go, so we'll get into the, all the judgments that take place, the signs and wonders that take place, and it's all for this reason, chapter 7, verse 5. Also, that the Egyptians shall know that I'm Yehovah, when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. This is the purpose. It's, you don't know Jehovah. I mean, Moses didn't know, know his name. Pharaoh said he doesn't. And this is what God's doing to all this so that you'll know. And this is only a taste of what's to come in these end days right now, isn't it? That's what all is going to get played out so that people might repent and come to know and come to cry out so be away and be ready to share the gospel in these last days. You know, there's so much more information that we could get into from the prophets, but the same language is in all of the end time prophetic scriptures of how God is going to reveal who he is again. And we'll come back to that later. So it's all so that the Egyptians may know that I am Yehovah. Um, Let's count chapter 7, verse 17. Thus says Jehovah, by this you shall know that I am Jehovah. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rods that is in my hands, and he shall be turned to blood. This is so that you'll know I'm Jehovah and obey and let my people go to save me. Beautiful, isn't it? Chapter 10, I'm going to just finish off this part of the narrative with chapter 10, verse 2. Verse 1, chapter 10, verse 1. Now, Yehovah spoke to Moses, go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his servants, that I may show these signs of mine. That's in Romans chapter 9. Paul does a commentary on this verse. That I may show these signs of mine before him and that you may tell, that's what we're doing now, tell in the hearing of your son and your son's son the mighty things I have done in Egypt and my signs, which I have done among them, that you may know, this is so that God's people will know, that I am Yehovah. So it's very important that we understand who he is. And you know, his name is not the Lord, it's Yehovah. Now, just to make it a bit easier for you, let's have another little screen share, and let's go to Exodus 15 this time. This is where we're going to be this Shabbat within... This Shabbat portion, Beshalach, which starts in Exodus 13, verse 17, to Exodus 17, verse 16. And so we obviously cover Exodus 15, the glorious song of Moses, or the song of the sea, the parting of the Red Sea. I mean, hallelujah, and literally hallelujah, because you can all agree with Yah. Everyone can say Yah. Well, don't underestimate, yeah, look at this. This is from Exodus 15, this week's Torah portion. Then, verse 1, Moshe and the children of Israel sang this song unto the Lord, unto Jehovah, and spoke, saying, I will sing unto Jehovah, for he has triumphed gloriously. Oh, I haven't started speech yet, have I? The horse and its rider he's thrown into the sea. Look, the Lord, 
is my strength and song. And listen, he has become my salvation. Oh, he is my God and I will prepare an habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. But look at what it really says. The Lord is my strength and song. Well, there it is in Hebrew. Atzi ve zimra ya. Atzi, my strength, Uzi, the Israeli machine gun, Uzi. Atzi ve Zimra, yeah, <laughs> and there it is, yeah, there it is. Let's go a bit deeper, yeah. Whoa, yod, hey, contraction for there it is with the four five points in again, yeah. But look, it's in there quite a lot, yeah. And there's all the examples if you want to go through them all. But the most common one is is what you'll see. Eh? Praise the Lord! It's hallelujah. But that's simple. Yeah, isn't it? Um, and I want to make notes of this, just, just bring it up now, flag it up again when we do the Torah in more depth. But this verse that we're looking at, Exodus chapter 15, verse 2, it says, Yehovah, or Yah, is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Well, look at that. Yeshua. Yehovah has become Yeshua to me. I hope he has become Yeshua to you. That's how we call on the name of the Lord. Through calling on the name of Yeshua, we're calling on the name of Yah, Yehoshua, Yeshua. There it is, Yeshua. And that verse is an amazing verse. It appears again in Isaiah chapter 12, which read that yourself. And also in Psalm 118, very powerful, powerful scriptures where that verse is repeated, and to the best of my knowledge, that's the only verse that appears in each section of the Tanakh. The Tanakh is the Torah, the Nevim, which means the prophets, and the Ketuvim, which means the writings, Tanakh. And this verse appears in each one of those sections, Exodus, the Torah, Isaiah, the Nevim, and Psalm 118, the Ketuvim. So that's another stag study that you might want to do yourself. Hallelujah. Stop that sharing and come back out. And next point I want to make is just a few scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 16. This is what I read about eight, nine years ago when I started to come into this wonderful faith more deeply. Hallelujah. Exodus, uh, Jeremiah chapter 16. Verse 19, but it's not a study in Exodus in Jeremiah, but if you go back and just read the few verses before, it's all about the second or the greater Exodus, which is the, is the Jewish people being gathered from the ends of the earth, wherever they've been scattered, just as the Torah said would happen. Well, it happened. <laughs> Israel was scattered to the ends of the earth, and Jeremiah 16 is a wonderful promise and prophetic word which is being fulfilled and increasingly being fulfilled with this wonderful event that's taking place now in Israel. But this is what gets my attention. Verse 19, Jeremiah. Oh, Yehovah, my strength, that's that Uzi, and my fortress, my refuge in a day of affliction. Look at this. The Gentiles, <laughs> the Gentiles shall come to you. And I should just think it's just all about Israel. It's not this mention of the Gentiles. The Gentiles shall come to you, and I'm one of them. I don't know, Mike's with me today, and he's one of them, and there's many others are coming to you from the ends of the earth and saying this. Surely our fathers, maybe you want to think of that in terms of the Catholic priesthood, we like to call themselves fathers, which he should have said don't. Surely our fathers have inherited lies, worthlessness, and unprofitable things. Will a man make a God God's for himself, which are not God's. Therefore, listen to this. Will I behold, I will this once more cause them to know. I will cause them to know. This is Jehovah, this is God, this is our creator speaking. He's going to cause us to know. My hand, you know, and the more we get into the Torah, we know how important the hand is. It's all Yeshua. And my might, and here it is. And they, the Gentiles that are coming asking, shall know that my name, it's not the Lord, it's Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. How we pronounce that is another is what we're going to come to. But whenever you see Lord in capital letters, it's Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. Isaiah, now, 
chapter 52. Ron mentioned this on our Tuesday Bible study. Ron done a study into the end times, the signs. And it was brilliant how he pointed this out, that one of the end time signs is what we've just read. When you read Jeremiah 16, it's an end time event. And Ron mentioned that, that it's an end time thing. Jehovah revealed this name. He used this scripture, Isaiah 52, verse 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. You've seen that narrative in Exodus. You know how important it is now. If it doesn't feel or seem important, well, that's just the flesh because it's that important to God. You know, the prayer Yeshua taught us to pray. We say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, hallowed, what's that mean? In Hebrew, and you can read the Hebrew New Testament where it's been translated by scholars. It's it's Yit Kadesh, which is you can hear it's the song we started off with, Kadosh, 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 Kadash, Yit Kadesh, Shimka, let your name be sanctified. This is how Yeshua taught us to pray. Let your name be sanctified. The prophets tell us how he's gonna do it. It's all connected with your kingdom come. Your will be done. His name being known is part of his plan. So Isaiah 52, verse 6, my people shall know my name. Well, I consider myself part of that. Therefore, they shall know that in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. But go to verse to chapter 56 now of the same book, in case you didn't identify with that as part of Israel. That's another study that we can have another day. But Isaiah 56, verse 6 says this. Isaiah 56, verse 6. Also the sons of the foreigner. The Gentiles, the sons of the foreigner, are definitely identified as that. Now grafted in. Now a member. No longer a stranger. No longer cut off. But the sons of the foreigner who join themselves. That's the word lava which, you know, Levi, the son Levi that was born, to join Levi, Lava, it's got the word love in there for heart, so it's a heart thing, it's those who join their hearts, you could say, to Yehovah, to serve him, because that's what this feat's about, you know, you serve and serve the Lord, amen, and look, to love the name <laughs> of Yehovah, to serve him. So, I mean, you know, I get excited, but that's why. Because I love the name Yehovah. I love to discuss it. I've spent years. Mike has, you know, I'll just say right now, Nehemia Gordon is someone you need to go and check these things out with. This that he spends a long, long time, more than me, on anecdotes, which are well worth listening to. And you will soon realise the man's a scholar who has sort, sort these things out. Another issue. In the Hemi Gordon, I think we'll probably put a few links up on this video or in the comments section, etc. Please engage if you want to, be nice. Um, so everyone, the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to Yehovah to serve him, to love their name of Yehovah, to be a servant, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenants, and this bit's famous, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, the burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Here's an interesting one in verse 8. I'm not going to put it up. We'll come back to this at the very end. The Lord God. But if you, if you notice in my translation, the New King James, it's got the Lord quite conventionally because that is actually Adonai. But then it's got God in big capitals and the Hebrew word for God is Elohim and that's not Elohim in the scriptures. You know what it is? Yehovah. But to keep with the convention, they would have to go the Lord, Lord. And that would look a bit silly, wouldn't it? Even if you did put it in all capitals. So it's actually Adonai Yehovah who gathers the outcast of Israel, says, yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. And that's a wonderful message for the sons of the foreigner, for Gentiles who have been grafted into the Commonwealth of Israel and have took on this identity. Hallelujah, as the one new man. That's what the new one new man is. So one more scripture on this, and then we're going to get into the study of the name. And the final scripture, there's so many, as Ron pointed out, but here's just, well, one or two more 
two more, two more, and then we get into the nitty gritty of it. Ma Malachi, Malachi chapter three. We'll be in Malachi on Monday, I'm sure, because we're doing the chronological gospels now on Monday afternoon at two o'clock. Join us on Zoom if you want to join us on Zoom. Let us know if you want our Zoom details. Otherwise, watch us on YouTube. But we'll definitely be back in Malachi because we're with John the Baptist now in the Gospels. So there's a lot of John the Baptist connection with Malachi. But this is what it says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Then those who feared Yehovah spoke to one another. That's what we're doing now. And Yehovah listened <laughs> and heard them. <laughs> so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear Yehovah and who meditate on his name. There's a book of remembrance, it's, you know, it's right now, that is being written for those who love us and meditate or mutter, talk about, discuss, study, delve deeply, which is what we're about to do right now. That's what, you know, I want this in my life. I want it in your life. I pray your name will be sanctified. Father, heavenly Father, seated in heavenly places, our Saviour taught us to pray this way, that your name will be sanctified and that your kingdom will come and that your will will be done. Thank you for grafting us in that we can pray this prayer. Amen. So that's sort of one more scripture and then I'll finish with this those set of scriptures. And it's Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 3, which is an amazing book. <laughs> you might want to pause here while you find it. But Zephaniah chapter 3, chapter, yeah, you know, I'm not going to go into the study of Zephaniah, it's amazing, but just this bit at the end, Zephaniah chapter 3, it's all end time stuff, I mean, it's just incredible when you read it, my daughter Jess came in last week and said how uh, the town was like a ghost town, deserted the streets, and that night I was on with Yaakov Prash doing a, his Bible study, and we were in Zeph Zephaniah chapter 3, and it says in Zephaniah, Chapter 3, that verse 6, I have cut off nations, their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitants. Amazing language when you consider the worldwide application of that these days. Streets deserted, cities uninhabited, Times Square in New, on New Year's Eve in New York. Wow, but look at verse 9, and I'm finishing off this now with the scriptures for today. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. For then, end time language, I will restore to the peoples a pure language. That they, this is why, may call on the name Yehovah. This is end time stuff. To save him. With one accord, this is God's purpose for our lives, that we may be free to serve him with his people. Israel's my son, my firstborn, let my people go, that they may serve me. That is biblical freedom, and he wants us to know his name. So let's get into the details now. I've shown you the Blue Letter Bible, Yehovah, and so on. So now we will just um, get into the details a little bit more now. So the first thing I want to just read out is this which just, you know, is it Yehovah? I say that, Yehovah. But I understand, and after you've read this, you hope you'll agree that, I don't think there's any problem with saying Yehovah, as we will read now. So I'll screen share again, so, so you can read it along with me, and you can obviously um, pause it and have a proper closer look at it. Just the text. In the 1800s and 20th century as well, scholars travelled to Jewish communities around the world who preserved Hebrew and Jewish prayer books and who read from the Torah every week in the synagogue, etc., to find out how they pronounced the letters of the Hebrew language. Safat Ahmed, the Book of Truth, was written in the 1980s by an Orthodox rabbi who had access to immigrants from virtually every traditional Jewish community around the world. The earlier studies were done by Christian German linguists in the 1800s. According to the studies, the following eight Jewish communities who preserve Vav as V 
with the European Jews, Kurdish Jews, Syrian Jews, Egyptian Jews, Persian Jews, Turkish Jews, Moroccan Jews, Algerian Jews. In all these communities, with the exception of Kurdish, Persian and Turkish, their daily language was Arabic, but they still pronounced Vav as V when they read the Torah. Jewish communities are always pronounced Vav as W, with the Arabic-speaking Yemenite Jews and Baghdadi Jews. So if you if it's W, well, you know, this is just, you know, the prophets say at the end, you will teach us these things fully. But you can see that people use W. Jewish, point three, Jewish communities who preserve the Vav as V in some cases and preserve the Vav as W in other cases because of Arabic influence with the Libyan Jews, Tunisian Jews, and out Mount Atlas Jews. Finally, the Samaritans who were not Jewish preserve the Vav as B and sometimes W because they now speak Arabic. So you can read that over again if you want to, but that is just for me. I don't. I'm. I'm not hung up over it. I attend uh, Hebrew uh, studies at the University of Liverpool, and my teacher wants us to use W, and I've got no problem using W. But I'm trained to say, or I have learned more to say V, and I'm used to saying Yehovah. But I can think we can agree there that W, V, it's a dialect thing. Some say W, some some say V. It's like a bit like. You know, the American thing, you, I, we, you say tomato, Americans, and we say tomato, or if you're a scouser, you go tomato, but whichever, it's just the pronunciation, isn't it? And I'm not going to, you know, worry about that too much. Okay, uh, the other thing I didn't show you, I just want to probably go back on this, is, uh, is why there is this sort of issue over using the name etc the ban on the name and i've got some notes on that that i'll probably just put up now i'll show you this now the ban on the name and it, it originated in uh, greek the greeks came in and they put a ban on the name let me just share So these are these are the notes that I had the pleasure in the Hebrew class in the university. It's just this is just like a bit bit of a anecdote. But when I started the Hebrew class, this is where I came across this ban, because you know, with all respect to my wonderful teacher, Dr. Paul Lawrence and the class, he's just teaching us the traditions that I think have just been passed down. And this is to go back to this, this ban on using the name and you know, it's whenever you see the letters Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, you have got to say Adonai. And this is what we got told. And I very gently protested and said, well, I won't be able to read them scriptures then because I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not going to read Adonai when I can see it's Jehovah. And so with all respect, he allowed me to use the name and I use the name Jehovah in the class. But... We've got the opportunity to do a bit of a project. So this was my project to show all what I'm going through with you today. And this was part of it to show you this, that the, um, this is where the band came from. So if you want to see these notes, you can ask for the link. But the, the Greeks prohibited it. And then there's the records. Just let's go to the Babylonian Talmud. Rosh Hashanah, ETMB. The Seleucid Greeks decreed that the name of Elohim may not be spoken aloud. When the Hasmoneans grew in strength and defeated them, this is the Maccabees narrative, they decreed that the name of Elohim be used in contracts, even. When the rabbis heard about this, they said, tomorrow this person will pay his debt and the contract with the name of Jehovah will be thrown on the garbage heap. So they forbade the use in contracts. The Romans continued the prohibition and there's some historic records of capital punishments. I can read this, I've just cut and pasted this, but I've been reading it myself today out of this this Babylonian Talmud. There it is, Abu Dazara 18a. This rabbi, this guy who would proclaim the name Yehovah, they sentenced him to be burnt because he used to pronounce the name the way it was written. They took hold of him, wrapped him in a Torah scroll, surrounded him with bundles of branches and set him on fire. Even the Jewish leaders conformed to this ban so that the people would be obeying them 
rather than the oppressors. You can see where they were coming from, I suppose, but no. And it's taught at this day, and I can literally say to this day, because it happened to me in university last year, that whenever the letters Yehovah, Yod Hey Vav Hey, are written, they are to be pronounced Adonai, including a case of exclusion from the life to come for anyone who mentions the name. So you can understand if you're under the rabbis, don't use the name, you wouldn't, if you're under the rabbis, according to this. Well, I'm not. I've got one rabbi, it's Yeshiva. Rabbi means great one, and he's my great one. So anyone who used the name, and here's an example from it, from the Mishnah, now Mishnah Barua, Barura 552, it's forbidden to read the glorious and terrible name as it's written, as the sages said. He that pronounces the name as it's written has no portion in the world to come. Therefore, it must be read as if it were written, I don't know. And there's more, you know, I've got more. I just keep going through it, but I don't want to do any of that. I just wanted to show you where the ban came from. It's not, it's a man-made ban. Man-made ban. So that's that. And the next thing I think I'm going to finish off with now is uh, I'm going to show you the examples now. I'm going to show you the examples. So the Aleppo Codex, I'll read a little script about the Aleppo Codex for those of you that don't know. It's the oldest uh, manuscripts that we've got. You know, if you want to say about the Dead Sea Scrolls, that's another issue. That's smaller parchments, the whole scroll of Isaiah. But even in the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, wherever the name appears, it's either appears as four dots or in the Paleo Hebrew, which no one could pronounce without vowel points. It's a word of mouth thing. It, there's other things I could show you with, from the, these, these Talmudic documents, etc. where every once every seven years, the name was pronounced so that people would know the name and would not forget the name, just couldn't write it down for these reasons, couldn't pronounce it publicly or you get wrapped in a Torah scroll and bears alive etc but you know they're just the things we've inherited so um when we look at the Aleppo codex you know where uh, I, I didn't have it because I've got an image up but if you go to be into Jerusalem you've been to that shrine of the book that nuclear proof building that's where this is housed the Aleppo codex and it's the most uh, you know ver ver um, revealed of all the manuscripts and the Aleppo and the Leningrad Codex is the other one, which is where all of our Bibles come from, because the Leningrad Old Codex is the oldest full manuscript, because that's what I sort of said, the Aleppo is not a full manuscript. There's evidence that the Leningrad was checked against the Aleppo. And now, and this was Nehemiah Gordon's testimony that his job in the Hebrew University as a research scholar, it was to check other manuscripts that were coming along. Everything was getting digitized and everything had to be checked. And it was against the standard of the Aleppo Codex and Leningrad Codex to check uh, the validity of other manuscripts. That's how esteemed they are. I wouldn't be wasting your time. It was just some sort of file down the road. It's the Aleppo Codex, what you're about to look at, photographs of now. And then finally, what we're going to look at is at uh, downloaded you can all do it yourself the leningrad codex it's about two gig but then you can see for yourself the complete leningrad codex and i'm going to show you one example out of 33 examples in a leningrad codex where all of the vowel points are in now remember now what i said at the beginning how the convention is you can you put the the, the four consonants if you will yod hey vav hey no one can pronounce that. No one can speak without vowels. You can't take vowels out of a language. You can't have a conversation. So the vowel points, three vowel points, one, the middle one's removed in all of those 6,500 and odd times, apart from a handful of times in the Aleppo Codex. That's definitely watching the Hemia's testimony on how this got revealed to him, the timing of it, when the planes were going into the Twin Towers and God's revealing this. And that's from the Aleppo Codex, because that was his job to compare the every dot and tittle, he was doing it. Uh, and then the Leningrad Codex, which is another mag magnificent thing, uh, document. There's 33 examples that we know of, and I'm going to show you one of them, and it goes back to last week's Torah portion, the final example that I'll give. So 
quickly now the Aleppo well, not quickly I mean just saying the Aleppo codex so let's share it again share right there we go so here's the scripts you can pause this if you want but I'll read it out examples now we're going to look at of Yehovah and the Aleppo codex and you're going to see the Aleppo codex the Aleppo codex was written about 930 CE in Tiberius and was originally a full manuscript of the entire bible this manuscript was preserved for a thousand years and at some point was relocated to the city of Aleppo in Syria Aleppo Codex, Aleppo, very famous the last few years with the bombardments of the people of Aleppo and Christian communities are still there. After the UN resolution establishing the State of Israel in 1947, it was damaged in the riots that broke out in Syria. At first, thought to have been completely destroyed. Later, most of it was discovered in a washing machine, its secret hiding place. In 1958, the parcel of Aleppo Codex was smuggled out of Syria to Jerusalem and be delivered to Itzhak ben Zvi, the then president of the State of Israel. Only the last 11 pages of the Torah, the first five books of Moses, the final chapters of the book of Deuteronomy survived the 1947 rites. Also, the final pages of the Song of Songs, all of Ecclesiastes, Lamentations, Esther, Daniel and Ezra and Nehemiah were lost. Of its original 487 pages, only 294 double-sided pages of the Aleppo Codex have been recovered to this day. Again, if I put these links in, you can download the Aleppo Codex yourself and sit there and read it. It's great. Endorsed by Maimonides, the Aleppo Codex was considered the authoritative text by which other Torah scrolls and codices were checked. There is evidence that the 1008 CE Leningrad Codex, the oldest complete manuscript of the Hebrew Bible, was corrected according to the Aleppo Codex. It's important to note that the Mas Masoretic vowel and cantillation mark, so I'll make you aware that now we'll have to deal with that in a sec, the cantillation marks, were employed to preserve the existing tradition of how the Bible was read or canted. That's how it sang the intonation in the synagogue. So there's marks, which are vowel marks, which are clear. It's easy to recognize vowel marks. And there's cantillation marks for the pitch of the singing. The Masoretes did not create a new tradition. They recorded the oral tradition of pronunciation of every Hebrew word in the Bible, which has been passed down from generation to generation. Amen. So, here we go. Here's the examples. Only a handful, and I'm going to just read them all and show you these things so you can follow me, me case in a sec. But this is what we're looking at now. This is a photograph of the Aleppo Codex. If you download it, you'll see it's exactly the same. So this is from 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 9, and Yeshe Yahu, which is Isaiah, said, here is the sign to you from Yehovah, look, that Yehovah, because the vowel points missing, will do what he said to you. Do you want the shadow of the sundial to go forward 10 intervals or back 10 intervals? So we've got two examples now of the name Yehovah or Ye, you know, the, the consonants Yod Hei Vav Hei, and then with the vowel points. So the first one is obviously there, highlighted in black. And that's what I'm saying. If you follow me, Kirsten, that thing, I've blocked out the cancellation marks. So that is what you see. And this is one of 33 times that, is this a slip of the pen? Is the scribe just writing away and he knows it's Yehovah? And does it just slip in? Yehovah? Does he just put the O in? Is it, is it the hands of God? Well, I don't know, but I know it's there. <laughs> You're looking at the Aleppo Codex right there. Yeah, Hovar, and then while well, we can see the convention when it continues, there's Yehovah again, but there's the cancellation mark removed, and now you can see the convention. It's Yod, Shva, Hey, no, no, Kolam, Vav, and then Kamat, no, uh, Kamat. So Yehovah is the first example, and Yehovah is the second. I think you got the idea. Let's go on. It gets a bit better. Some of them. Here's one. 
this is from First Kings chapter eleven, chapter eight, verse eleven. So that because of the cloud, the Kohanim could not stand up to perform their service for the glory of Jehovah filled the house of Jehovah. Okay, this is a bit easier to see. The glory that is the way glory bekavod Yehovah, uh, and then Yehovah, Yehovah, Yehovah. Another example. Aleppo Codex, this is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, says Yehovah. They may make plans, but the plans are not mine. They de develop alliances, but not from my spirit, in order to pile sin upon sin. Take out the cancellation mark, and there it is. Look at that. Yehovah. 33 times, don't, you know, 6,500 or more times in this or in the Leningrad, it disappears. Yehovah, his name is Yehovah, not Adonai. Look at that, the final example. But there it is. It's a slip of the pen. Or is it? It's there. You just can't take it out. Yehovah. Here's another one, not many to go now. This is from Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 12. A spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me a loud sound. Blessed be the glory of Yehovah from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another. Yeah. Baruch. Bechavod. Kavod. Sorry, Baruch Kavod. Yehovah. You know, yeah. Oh, there's the crucial thing that's always missing. There where the case is. That is always missing. That cholam. Ho, ho, ho. Yeho. Yehovah. Final example from the Aleppo, nearly finished now. I'm going to hand over to Mike to do the real ironic blessing, and then we'll listen to a lovely rendition of it being sung. This is the final one today from the Aleppo. This is, well, there's not many in the Aleppo. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 20 to 22. And this is what I've mentioned before, Lord God. Lord God. Again, the words of Yehvah. Look at the top, there it is. Zabah, Yeh. Va, no kolam, no o, can't pronounce it properly, ye, va. Again, the word of ye, va, came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Zidon, Zidon, prophesy against it. Thus says, now our Bibles will have the Lord in little and God in big, which would be Adonai, Elohim. Well, here it is, Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. No, Lord, it's sorry, Lord, that's absolutely right. But they can't put Lord there now, can they? So they go God in big letters. But it's actually, when you take that cancellation mark out, Yod, hey, Vav, hey, with all of the vowel points, Yehovah. That's what's written in the Aleppo Codex. I'm going to swap now and do the final example, which is uh, going to be the Leningrad Codex. The Leningrad Codex. Now, you might have thought that was a bit untidy, that Aleppo. Well, this is the Leningrad, it's a lot neater. <laughs> I like reading the Aleppo, the Leningrad, beautiful. So, I'm going to share this if I can. Does that come up? There it is. Now, look at this. And this is quite hard to navigate, so bear with me. I want you to see what we're looking at. Hey, it's a picture, it's a digitized form. That's what they're doing in the Hebrew, uh, the Jewish university, is it the Hebrew? But they're digitizing all, all Hebrew manuscripts, all, all kinds of Hebrew manuscripts. You know, New Testament manuscripts are being found because of this effort to digitize all Hebrew manuscripts. So this is the digital, you know, it's, it's about two gig to download. But here's just one example that it shows because of what we, there's 33 examples but this is one that i chose we read this on last shabbat exodus 13 we're looking at exodus 13 verse 9 exodus chapter 13 verse 9 is the verse we read this that what we, I don't know if we got that far but I'm sure we all read it ourselves and exodus chapter 13 verse 9 it shall be as a sign to you on your head as a memorial between your eyes that Yehovah's Torah may be in your mouth, but with a strong hand, Yehovah has brought you out of Egypt. So 
that's it's a bit hard to navigate, but I'm gonna try my best. That's what it looks like. That's just a picture of the page. It's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, I don't know about you, but my eyes almost thank me that. Like, thanks for looking at this. It's like what my eyes were created to look at for all of us. So I say it's a bit tricky, but that's the verse we're looking at in Hebrew. I'm going to show you it in the blue letter when I finish this. But here it is in Hebrew. And uh, here's what we're looking for. There is the first instance of Yehovah that we just read, uh, that Yehovah's Torah. And there's Torah there, Torot, Yehovah. So I can go in on that a bit. Yeah, see, Yehovah. No, I mean, yeah. No, no, oh, Yehovah, Yehovah. That's the convention. That's the convention. That's what he's being taught to do, this scribe. Oh, what happened here then? Here's the next part of the <laughs> thing. Yeah, see, here's the cancellation. Yehovah. No, I mean, you know, I haven't just wrote this. You know, I haven't. This is in the Leningrad Codex. Download it yourself, learn to navigate through it, and there it is. I mean, I'm so excited that I'm just about containing myself for this, for the purposes of this. <laughs> but now I'm going to finish. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for being patient. <laughs> Here's the verse in the Blue Letter Bible that I'm now going to show you next. And then I'm going to finish and ask Mike to do the ironic blessing and have that beautiful song. And it went longer than I thought, but, you know, you can pause, you can go back over it. Please avail yourself. That's the verse we've just read. Exodus chapter 13, verse 9. Shall be a sign. Yehovah's Torah. Now look what they've done in the Blue Letter Bible. Where are we? Uh, there it is. This, so it's the Torah. Oh, sorry, Torah. 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 Yehovah. See, Yehovah. Yehovah. No. Call them no, oh, yeah, fa. But look what they've done, and they they followed it through, and exactly what I just shown you in the Leningrad, they put it in. See, the Torah, Torah, Yehovah, oh Yehovah, Yehovah. Isn't that brilliant? I mean, I just think that's brilliant. So I'm stopping the share there. I think I've come to the end of what I wanted to say today. There's plenty to go over. I think you'll agree. There's plenty to go over. So I'm going to hand over to Mike, and Mike's going to do the ironic blessing. So just turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 6. Now, with all respect, Nehemiah Gordon calls this the ironic blessing. <laughs> because it's with all respect, because look what it says in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. Yehovah spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel, and Mike's going to do it now. And you can see it, if you've already seen today, whenever it's L-O-R-D capitals, it's definitely Yehovah, definitely yod hey, vav hey. So it's the name, isn't it? The name. And then this is what he says in the end, verse 27, so they shall pull my name. So that's why Nehemiah calls it the ironic, because the way... The Jewish people and most people do this is they'll say, Even Adonai, by Ishmaeka, Yair, Adonai. And it's like, that's not what it says. It's as you're going to hear it from Mike now, as he does it every week. It's beautiful, Mike. You're going to hear the ironic blessing. Only Mike is of a different priesthood than Aaron. He's not a Levitical priest, he is of a royal priesthood. He's from the order of Melchizedek. Yeshua is our high priest. We are a kingdom of priests. We are a royal priesthood. This is what Peter says. We're a royal priesthood. So now you're going to hear the blessing in Hebrew with the name of Yehovah, which is what the purpose of this blessing is, to put his name on the people. You're going to hear it from Mike. And then when he's done that, he's going to play us out with that beautiful song from Sarah Lieberman, who she's recorded it this year, Messianic Jewish worship leader, in a home, playing the keyboard, singing it to us on Zoom. So you can just feel like you're right there as you hear it. So thank you for being part of this today. Thanks for listening to us. Uh, as I say, be nice. We can discuss things. Be nice. I'll, I will be nice too. And thanks very much. So over to you, Mike. God bless everyone. Shalom. If you want to join us on the Sabbath, Check us out for our Zoom details. Shabbat, shalom, shalom. Over to you, Mike. Hey.
Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen, brother. Hallelujah, bro. Yehovah, hallelujah. <laughs> to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 